game I sent you in the drive was like, <laughs> I completely sprinted it. Oh, I saw. I watched it a little bit. Uh, uh, can you see my screen? No, I wait. Let's see. On Discord? Uh, or... Yeah, let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to try sharing my screen, recording the stream, and streaming, and see if my internet slash computer can handle it. That should be good. Okay, so I guess before we get into the replay, like, what are your... Did you send me your goals or your the things that you wanted to improve on the most? No, I did not. I forgot to do that. I don't. Okay, so what are you looking to get out of coaching, or what? What are your goals with your gameplay? Just become a like more lane dominant ADC kind of player. Like at least from like watching better ADC players, I kind of see that most of them are able to like build up a lead on their own, or just like even when they have like support players that aren't that well. Like during laning phase, I just see that they're able to kind of just be better and win the lane off, like just them being better. So it's like, that's one thing for me. Okay. I mean, I think we can definitely help improve your lane phase because I noticed there were a lot of different small lane things from just this replay that are really good to go over, just like general hey. concepts. So let's get into this VOD. Um, okay. Before we get into the lane, uh, and like actually start watching the waves. How do you want to play this matchup? Well, I I, I pick a list into them because they picked the uh, the Felios and Lulu first, and there's other champs that I'm more comfortable on. But I know that Callista's like in a pretty good state right now, and I I think I've like usually when I used to play a Felios a lot, people would pick Callista into it, and then I don't know how the matchup's supposed to go, but I. Felt like it'd be more Callista favored, but I played it pretty fucking horribly, and I thought we'd win the two v twos a lot harder. But I don't know if it's I I feel like I just misplayed it super hard. I see. Yeah, I think Callista is a good pick into Aphelios, but it's very early game reliant. The how you play the yeah. first like five minutes of the game just really determines how useful you'll be because he outscales you. Like he's a crit champ, and you're an on hit. Yeah, champ. yeah, yeah. So you have to win the game at like three minutes, which you should be able to do on Callista. But let's take a look at how we actually uh, approach the lane phase. So what were you thinking about um, for the first wave? Like how did you want to play the very first wave that came out? I feel like our, our level one's a lot stronger than theirs, but I somehow ended up with like losing like a lot of my HP during this trade here. Okay, so and... you guys are taking the third bush. You're looking to get a good trade before the wave settles which is good i don't know why but i thought it'd go a lot better but then somehow it just ended up like a really bad trade for us because i know that when i play against callistas they like to do this a lot where they just sit in third bush and then they either kill the adc or manage to like blow a summoner but i literally did not do that at all <laughs> all right let's take a look at why this went poorly is it target selection or like I don't know? Maybe I just don't hit there and just walk back so he doesn't auto me, but I also don't know why it went so poorly there. Okay, so there's a few things. So the first thing being the benefit of kind of holding this bush is that if they walk to lane without their minions, then you have an opportunity to trade. Uh, and they also have an opportunity to be desynced like this. So the first factor to keep in mind uh, in this situation is that you guys are playing... Wait, how do I get my epic pen to show up? Hold on. So you guys are playing around these minions. And the reason why these three casters specifically matter a lot is because each one of these is 14 magic damage. And so if you are trading autos with Aphelios, you can think of it like... If I'm getting aggro from all three of these creeps, he has a BF sword over me, level one. So it's really important to kind of keep these in mind when you're looking for trades. Mm. With that in mind, too, um, you guys want to fight kind of away from this circle here. So I see a really good opportunity when Aphelios is walking to lane here. If Lulu doesn't show up here, you guys want to hold the edge of this bush and kind of walk up and zone her from walking uh, to lane if she decides to walk this way. Because they're not walking together, and they're not yeah. walking with their wave. So I see this. I see 
Lulu should get trumped when uh, they walk to lane. However, because of these minions, if they're together, like Felix is here, Lulu's here, you lose the trade, right? So you want to capitalize yeah, on them being desynced. Let's take a look. So we fucked up. Lulu yeah, already Lulu gets to walk up for yeah, free. Yeah, she's already got the casters, right? So how can we make this still good? Well, your Leona still has Aftershock on, so you don't care about him losing HP. But in this matchup, because he has a range advantage, any kind of short trade that you do where you're not just straight up killing them, he's going to auto you like two or three times on the way out. So yeah. your timer to hit this guy for free is before Aphelios is actually in range to hit you. So what I would probably look to do here is I'd auto Lulu. i jump to the side like you did. Auto him, jump to the side. But the problem is here, this jump is really important because you want to prevent this guy from proccing PTA on you. So it's with this auto attack, I would probably auto him, hop down, and then just proc your E. And then you start the lane phase with Lulu being like half, which is pretty ideal for yeah. you guys. But you go for an extra mm -hmm. auto and jump into the Aphelios. And now it's like this entire time that you have to walk out because you don't have damage to kill him, you're not only going to get auto attacked by him the whole time, but if you decide to auto attack him back, you're going to take aggro of these casters now. So it's a really yeah. bad spot for you to be in. You want to play more kind of like on the side here, away from the minions. Yeah. Because I'm in range to like, if I, the second I hop there, the minions are in range to hit me, right? So it's yeah, like, exactly. Hey, hey, Prismal, buddy. Hey, man. hey fuck you. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I got a sub. Um, <laughs> but yes, you want to be basically playing around the minion wave as best as yeah. you can. Because look, you take one auto from the casters here. You rent them, and then on the way out, he autos you an extra two times. So this trade, you should have been, like, idea. full HP or maybe tanked one auto attack, but now it's like you're really doomed. You're too low yeah. to actually contest them. Because the whole point of taking that trade, level one, is you want to get their HP and put yourself in a position where you can get level I'm two. I'm so healthy. Mm -hmm. um, and then also keep in mind, Aphelios has a range advantage over you. So whenever yeah. you try to auto attack minions... Uh, unless you're all in him, he's going to hit you, right? Yeah. So you want to save your health and be full health to where you can lose HP on the second wave to get level two. And then if he tries to hit you, your Leona can just flash on him if he tries to contest. My thought process here with this wave was to get two before he could get two because he doesn't have an ability still. It's like relatively still like mm -hmm. weak, but so I think I chugged a pot here and then just started to like fast hit the wave. My wave management's like pretty bad too though. I've gotten a little bit better with it, but still pretty mediocre. I mean, you have the right idea here of you want to hit level two and you want to push them off. It kind of sucks that you're not able to zone them on this wave because of that first trade, but you yeah. still get a really good situation. Where... I feel like this would be really odd. They, I didn't see that they hit two. I thought they were still one, but I don't know if it's a kill angle, but my Leo Flash is here and I thought that it'd be like, a kill 100% but maybe it's just me being like unfamiliar with Callista's like damage spike I think that this situation here because of the caster situation that we talked about and also keeping in mind your HP it's pretty bad yeah. to go for an all in because he has heal barrier or they got, they have heal barrier and you have cleanse Yeah. so one you're down to combat some and two they have the minion wave so I would probably when your support flashes in instead of jumping forward you can still deal damage to these guys. Um, but the benefit of Callista is that you can hop around and auto attack yeah, yeah. way faster than they can walk up to you. So you can hit this guy as long as you're keeping in mind that you want to not let Lulu get in range to yeah. press her stuff on you. So as long as you're jumping and kind of kiting around here, you can still force him out of lane without taking a terrible trade from Lulu hitting you. But let's see what you do. I'm pretty aware that like Lulu's like her damage is really strong early too, so it's like. Also, I missed my Q here, like I did it. So. Yeah, usually you want to start with like, auto Q while he's stunned, ideally. Yeah. At the start of the trade, before he flashes, or at the very end to finish him off. You kind of flashed, like I would say towards After, the middle of the engage. Yeah. It like wasn't at the very end to where your Q would kill him, but it wasn't at the very beginning either, which it was kind of bad. Like you either start with it or you use it at the end. Like, yeah, here would be really a perfect bad. auto queue. I was feeling myself. I just sent it. Yeah, I mean, if you hit the queue, 
it's ideal. But the situation is pretty bad for you now. And I think it's mostly yeah. just because of how you played around kind of the minions. And we'll look at this as a common theme as we continue on. But I think that when I was watching this before our session, I noticed that you try to do as much damage as you can to them. But when you're playing Callista or like a champion that needs to win lane, you want to also prioritize taking the least amount of damage from them possible, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like it, it, even if you do like 10% less damage to him, but you get a really good trade because you're avoiding like Lulu's damage, for example, then it's still better for you than what you're opting into here. But obviously you think you can just kill this guy. So you're going for this, yeah. which is I, like, I respect like, that. It's cope as fuck, but I mean, Callista's like really not a champ I play that much anymore. I used to play it a lot when she like came out, but I think my champ pool isn't really like ADCs that are kind of like lane dominant or like or like just the ones that are reliant on like building a lead up early. Like, so it's like an I picked the champ because I think it was a good angle, and I also want to get better at champs like this that are strong in lane and that I'm like able to build leads on but I know that like as a player I don't really have that like how do I word it it's like I uh I'm not an aggressive player like by on nature. a lot of champs yeah right you're more of like a reserved scale do yeah. damage in team fights kind of guy and you want to get better at uh just the early lane phase yeah that makes sense uh i think that well, this is it, a really good it's like on, to learn it on i would say that again because like when i play champs like kaisa i know how to be aggressive on her but then when i played like other champs like some i feel like sometimes it's just me being uncomfortable on champs also kind of affects it a little bit but realistically it's like i'm i know i'm not that like really aggressive type of player i kind of just play a little bit reserved and try not to amp but also being able to like play on like a if i have a good support i'll obviously not be a, a pussy i'll like still make plays mm -hmm. but when it comes down to like champs that are strong early or just like lane dominant it's like i usually struggle with those a little bit more I see. I think it all comes down to kind of understanding how a champion that wins lane wants to function. Like a lot of people view it uh, kind of black and white. Like I need to kill my opponent in lane and I need to play super aggressive from the first wave. But um, mm. what it boils down to, I would say the best way that I, I could explain it is that when you play a champion that needs to snowball, the reason why they need to snowball in the early game, one, like the first part of it would be that they fall off. And if you don't snowball, you're in a bad spot. But the second part of that is the reason why you can snowball is because you have an advantage in the early game. You have something in your kit that makes you stronger than the people you're playing against. So you just want to be permanently kind of like leveraging your strengths to always look for opportunities to punish them when they walk up. But it doesn't mean mm. that you have to like kill yourself or go in super deep to force these plays. It's more like even getting small advantages will accumulate over time, but you should be able to get them from the lane phase, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of like shifting, I guess, the mindset a bit uh, and just thinking about, I just want to keep taking good trades or I just want to make this guy have a bad base timer. But if you ever index yourself into an all-in or you die to a gank because you're not really tracking the enemy jungler, that's when your game's over. So even if you're playing kind of reserved with this uh, matchup, if every time they walk up, you throw your Q at them and your Leona goes in and you like take a good short trade, that's still going to be a good situation for you. You're still going to get a CS lead over this guy and you're still going to be able to do whatever you want in the game. So it's something that you'll definitely have to work on as you, you know, just play more games and be more mindful yeah. of. But I don't think it's necessarily like I'm bad at playing aggressive champions or like I play too safe. Like that's a valid point, but I think it's it's a lot easier to come to an understanding of how to play them than you think, I would say. Yeah. Let's watch the rest of this uh, this lane. Like, here I know that they can't walk up as much. Like, we have... 
I think actually I forgot where it was, but I know that at some point in the game, like they struggle to walk up because if they just walk up and my Leo gets on top of them, they just die. Yes. Yeah, polymorph's a real ability, by the way. Perfect. Oh, one second. And then we just crash the wave, but. No, this was perfect. I mean, you guys, this is the, the strength of this matchup, right? If you guys ever get on top of them, you can hit all your buttons, then you'll win. So your lane phase is actually still in a good spot. Um, you're probably going to look to crash this wave and then base, and he gets to miss a yeah. bunch. Is Solid that the right so play? Far. Yeah, yeah, crashing okay. and basing. Um, so My wave management's like pretty mediocre. I think at the very basis of it, you want to crash the wave and then do something, always. That's like, first question is, can I crash my wave? Which is, in this case, it's yes. Second mm. question is, what do I want to do with my time? And... You have 900 gold, so you can buy Zerker Greaves, which is a really big spike for Callista. So I would almost always base here. Also, walking the wave in here, bit. really important that you did. A lot of AD carries will make the mistake of just letting the enemy support freeze, and it pretty much nullifies the advantage you got from just killing him because he would get all these minions yeah. if you let her freeze. So this is perfect. It's a fat wave too, but I know there's some situations where, like, I know it happens to me a lot where sometimes I, like, struggle to get the wave in just because of, like, the bad timers I get. I don't know how to explain it, but it's, like, a habit I have where sometimes I'll, like, struggle to get the wave in or I'll, like, get the wave in and then sometimes it'll just end up really bad for me where they either manage to have, like, freeze it or just, like, I don't know. It's weird. Okay. That's a good point. So... At the very baseline of it, whenever it was you... kind of like uh, when I go? killed the Felios when I came back, where like it was a really fat wave, but then Lulu managed to stop my recall, and then it was just like weird because I didn't know what to do because obviously I'm like low as fuck and I need to reset, otherwise I'm gonna like lose lane and then. I'd say the very basis of it is most of the time people will build slow pushes. Uh, like you're doing here. Mm. And when you stack a really big wave, it's pretty hard for them to stop you from crashing, even if you're weaker than them, unless they have mm. their jungler here. So more often than not, uh, people like to say you shouldn't fight when the wave is pushing to you and they're stacking a big wave into you. Because yeah. one, they have more minions than you and they'll have an XP lead, like they can fight when they level up. And two, if you die, you end up missing a lot. Like you saw Are you when... able to go back to yeah, this when one, I right? killed the Felios? Yeah, yeah, was, the wave's like really big here, but I managed to kill him. It's just like... What is it? Like, am I supposed to like thin the wave out before I reset? Or is like me just resetting immediately a better option? Because I usually don't know what to do in situations like this where... Like if I kill enemy ADC, but... They have like a massive wave. I usually don't know what to do with like the minion wave. It's either like, do I thin it out or do I just like reset? So Not here, fuck up my tempo. He he stayed on the map with like one HP. So Jeez. you obviously want to punish him and kill him here. But the thing to keep in mind is that one minion wave is equivalent to pretty much like half of a kill on average. Um, it's 180 gold, and it's also a lot of XP. So if you were to kill him here, he has this wave and the next wave coming in. And as you saw what happened, because it's such a big wave, your support can't really stop their Lulu from crashing it after he dies. He's just overstaying. So the way that you punish this is by trimming the wave and then trying to freeze when your Leona gets here. But if you try to kill him and you end up so low that you can't actually stay in lane, it's really bad for you because the wave is so big that... By the time you actually get back to yeah. your tower, it's going to crash and you're going to miss it. Or you're going to stay at this health and crash it, or uh, eat the wave under tower with one HP. And even in I that can't case, it's bad. Stay here. It's like really like you bad. Could, you could. You could theoretically my... get these minions if you really wanted yeah. to. But then it just feels bad because you like have it to base. fucks up my tempo. Exactly. Really and then yeah, he you... walks back and then I'm kind of like forced to stay. But, I thought but you that... can't stay, right? It feels terrible. Yeah. Uh, the wave is pushing out and you have to base. So to avoid this, he was basically in this situation where he needs to base and his wave's pushing out. So your goal should be to freeze the wave more so than to kill him. Um, because he'll be in kind of this situation where 
his wave is pushing like you guys have a freeze and he i just feel like i I wanted to make up for the i guess i still lose a lot though because i lost a lot of minions but i just mm -hmm. wanted to when i went in on him there it was mostly because i fucked up the 2v2 from earlier and died yeah you wanted to punish him on this bounce because he just killed you and you feel like he's overstaying so you want to get something back right yeah i think the big thing to just realize is that you actually get more gold and xp by freezing and eating this entire wave because he's going to miss the next one that's coming out of base than you would if you were to kill him and then have to base and miss this wave so i think it's not entirely black and the white in the sense that oh i can't kill this guy because the wave is too big but i would definitely prioritize just trimming the wave first uh, because then if you were to kill him and the wave is a lot thinner you could probably kill this wave and base if that makes sense is there a world where like i don't lose that much hp either off just like killing him here because i know that i thought that my rend would kill the minion to get me like the reset timer and then be able to like kill like kill him a lot quicker but the, i don't know i know it's a fat wave that i'm trying to fight him in but i also thought that like if the rend killed the minion there i'd have the rend back up and then not resort to like jumping into like the full minion wave but maybe it's like still the same outcome even if like the minion dies to the rend there so it's actually bad to kill him, even if you could kill him and be, like, half HP. And the reason being, because there's no minion wave for you for a long time, by the time that he gets back to lane, you're going to be stuck at the HP that you were at when you killed him. So he's going to base, spend all of his money from killing you and getting whatever remnants of this wave that he gets. And by the time that he gets back to lane, now he can freeze on you. I think a lot of early game laning is really more focused on the minion waves than actually killing the person that you're playing against. Because like killing him is important in the lane and, and getting ahead is important, but it's all centered around making more money than him and, and being stronger, right? So even if you kill this guy right now, which you do, you had to burn cleanse, and let's say you kill him two autos faster, so you're half HP, you're still half it's HP. Still bad, yeah. And there's all these minions here. So always prioritize, if there's a huge wave, Focus on your wave state more so than killing him. You're also going to be able to freeze this next wave um, if you just start trimming the wave. You can kind of position yourself aggressively without walking into his casters. So what I mean by that is you start hitting these melees, you start trimming them, and you try to fish a Q on him. So you could uh, position the way that you're positioning, but instead of committing to actually going for the kill here, I think something that would be really good is you want to zone him from getting these three creeps. So you can do that by, he's autoing this, you auto him one time. Do I hop into the bush? Yeah, you hop into Maybe. the bush because you're taking aggro of like 50 minions right now. You hop into the bush <laughs> and then you just start hitting the wave from here. And then if he ever tries to walk up and hit this, like kind of from here, you're threatening a wrap around like this. You just want to basically stall him as long as possible. But the worst thing that you can do is walk into the minions and take aggro of everything. Because this basically dooms your next minute by losing yeah. all your health to these minions. This guy is a non-factor. He's just basically killing himself to get this wave in because he knows that if you freeze here, you're going to be level 5 while he's level 4, and your wave is going to be pushing into him, and you can look to fight him. It's the exact yeah. same situation as um, before when you killed him. Or I guess it's a little bit after this. You kill him on the slow push. Yeah. Like, let's say you didn't die. This situation would happen. You'd have a way bigger wave. And um, you'd still have cleanse. And he would be down more gold and XP. So, like, this situation would look a lot better. Laning is a lot more about, I guess, prioritizing getting money and gold from the minions while also denying them as much as possible. So it's not um, as much about killing them as, I guess... It kind of feels like you think that it is. It's more... I only get that idea only because I feel like I know I'm going to be outskilled by Felios, but I know that I'm able to like the champ wins lane like a lot harder earlier, but I just played it really bad. So, yeah, I mean, that's fair. That's why I feel like desperate to make a play just to like recover and kind of get the lead back. Mm hmm. Because you know, I, I, I mean, I've played against good Callista players that are just able to, like, snowball the games, like, super hard off just, like, 
building a lead in lane, but I mean, I'm not that type of player yet, so. Well, that's the goal. We're going to get there eventually. Um, let's take a look. So obviously we misplayed the first, you know, four minutes of the game and we're down <laughs> a bit more CS than we should be, but you still end up killing him after all those mistakes that you made. So let's see yeah, kind of what your a... thought process is after you get this kill. Crash wave and then just reset. Yeah. You definitely can crash this wave. It's just Lulu here. And then worst case scenario, you have your Gwen on Krugs. So he can help you crash if their jungler shows up. And you do the perfect thing by walking the wave in and making sure Lulu can't freeze. So this okay, is, I thought I Leona would do that. I, I've gotten better at doing it myself. I know back then I had like a really bad habit of just thinking like if my support would walk up and if not, then oh well. But I, I am a little bit better at it now. But No, that was good. That was great. Let's go back to lane. Now the wave is pushing into me. I know that, but I... Like, what am I... I my wave management's just really bad to, like, not having the best awareness to know what to do at, like, the current situation with the wave. Like, I know I don't want to fight him on this wave, but... But I just let the wave push into me, and then... Or are we, like, looking to fight? Because I, I don't know. So what do you think uh, you should do? Or what did you do in the game off this wave? I forgot what I did in, the, in this game. But I mean, looking at the, like, just this alone, it, like, the wave is massive as fuck. So any trade we take is going to be hard losing for us. Unless right. I have, like, super, super, super ahead, then sure. But, I mean, I'm not going to win with just boots and a longsword, like, vegan-ish into this, like, bat wave. Right. So you identified that he has this really big wave here. I think another thing that you can think about is that your jungler is topside. Yeah, that too. So you still want to look to fight this Aphelios in general because you're level four, it's early game, you still win at this point. Yeah. So how can you put yourself in a position where you win? I think you correctly identified that this guy has a really big wave. And so the way that you play around this wave is instead of focusing on looking to kill him off this uh, or just letting him push entirely, I think you should really give yourself enough vision to trim this wave and kill some of it. So it's still going to push to you, um, but it's not going to push to you as fast to where it's too big for you to fight him in. The reason why that's important is because if he's anywhere in this general area, he's too close to his tower for you to kill. Yeah, You need him to be in the middle of the lane kind of anywhere around here for you to fight him. So Honestly, the way that you get him that, here is uh, with the wave. Sorry, say that again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I realized a lot too during this game that a lot of the 2v2s we took were like near their turret. So every time we'd like take a fight, I realized that like it's a lot. It's not where he wants to be, like where like an ideal fight is for us, but rather just like at his turret where it's not really the best for me because I'm... I know there was like a few fights where I just tank like turret shots for no reason and then just ended up losing because of it but i i get that it's probably better for us to fight where he's like much more in the center of the lane rather than at his turret right so let's go back a little bit as you're walking to lane and then let's just get a general idea of how do i want to play this next reset so as i'm in fountain when i'm walking to lane as ad carry i'll first look at my jungler and think about what he's doing so i know that he has a gromp up and the what are they called the grubbies are spawning so he's gonna be going to grubbies or most likely he'll be going to grubbies when they spawn and i also know because you just crashed before you base this wave is slow pushing into you yeah you know you don't want to fight in a big wave so your goal especially because their support is desynced and basing late you i would be thinking i'm gonna get to lane before lulu is there so i want to set up the wave to be ideal for me and we just talked about what's an ideal wave state for you, right? It's slowly pushing to you because if it's pushing to you, the minions on your side are dying and that's what's incentivizing him to walk up to CS or you just zone him um, and the minion wave is pushing to you and you freeze, right? So you need yeah. the wave to be pushing to you if you're not diving him. I think a general rule of thumb for Callista or any kind of aggressive lane is you're either slow pushing a really, really big wave as slow as you can, just only last hits and diving them off of it from full HP or you're freezing and you're looking to punish them every time they walk up to CS. 
So right now, I I know what a slow pink. pitch is, and I know what uh freezes. Right? Okay. <laughs> I'm like really bad with like knowing when to I'm do not, what. Yeah, because I know what they are, and like sometimes, like I know when I'm like doing slow pushes or like when I can freeze and stuff. But I know that I'm like pretty mediocre with knowing when I should be. I mean, I think you did a pretty good job here. You naturally, without understanding the the clear reason why. You pink warded River to give you safety to hit the wave from Lilia. And then you trimmed the wave to try to freeze. And then their Lilia showed bot side. So you have to give this wave. You can't fight without Sums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was, even though you don't necessarily understand the theory behind why um, you should play a certain wave state the right way, you're naturally doing the right thing. Uh, and if we go back to kind of understanding what your champion wants to do in the lane or how you want to fight, uh, you can use that kind of line of thinking to apply to how do I want to touch the wave or what do I want to do with the wave? It just starts with what does my champion want to do, right? And for yeah. a champ like Callista or Kaiza or Draven, generally speaking, it's you want them to push into you slowly. Like I, when I say slowly, I mean their minions are pushing into you by only like one or two or three auto attacks worth of push. Or you're slow pushing into them and trying to die. I know so, it's fine to understand it, like, do it naturally, but I guess for me it just kind of feels bad because I want to be able to, like, understand why I'm doing the things I'm doing and not just, like... Not just, like, do the right thing but not know why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, does that make sense, though, why you would uh, trim the wave and look to fight him on it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, this was all solid fundamentals. Do you have any questions <clears throat> about what you, like, why you did what you did for the last 30 seconds? Because this was exactly what I would do. No, maybe I'm just like, I trim the wave and then I, what, like try to hold a freeze there? Mm -hmm. You trim the wave and try to hold a freeze because 2v2, did I try to hold the, the freeze the lane, there? I don't know what I did there. I forgot no, you, I you gave the freeze because Lilia showed, but the general oh, yeah, idea yeah. of he needs his jungler to come bottom to crash the slow push into my tower because 2v2, if he's pushing into me and my Leona gets on top of him, then he'll die. It starts with that. It starts with knowing 2v2, if my Leona gets on top of him, he dies. And then you think like, oh, he's too close to his tower, so I want him to be away from the turret for me to be able to press Leona E on him and him to die. So the best case scenario for me is when the wave is in the middle of the lane. So you kind of just look at the wave and you're like, how can I get this wave in the middle of the lane? Yeah. That's kind of how you formulate the thought process. So you trimmed the wave. Leona's or Lulu is in base. She's not here yet. You pink warded before you walked up, which was ideal because you don't have cleanse, right? If Lilia yeah. was in this bush and you didn't pink ward this, you could very easily die to a gank. So that was good to get vision before you step up. Yeah. Landed a Q on Lulu trying to get the ward. You see the Lilia bowling ball. So now you can't actually fight him on this wave because you still don't have cleanse. Even if you don't die, like we talked about earlier, you want to preserve your condition and HP and not just lose health because you want to be as healthy as possible for when you actually decide to all in him. To be honest, I, I think I, I wanted to play a little bit passive here though because she was bot side and I also thought they were doing dragon because Lulu stopped showing on map for like a little bit. Yeah, and your jungler's top. So you're, you're naturally yeah. going to play safe just because you have the you're, you're high elo. You have the inclination of, oh, they're junglers bot side, so I shouldn't be here. But the way that you can think about it in terms of bot lane is that you know, okay, off this reset, Aphelios can't crash his wave into my tower without his jungler here. So I'm going to play by trimming the wave and playing aggressive just enough to make their jungler show. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's kind of the next step of how can I manipulate my wave around what's happening in the game. You're strong. Um, I, I know that it's like sometimes like in games they'll all like over trim the wave and then it's like wouldn't know what to do from like that situation there where like if I over trim the wave too hard then it's like pretty. So let's say you one shot most of this wave and it's pushing into him. Do you think that that would be a good situation for you? No, because then I have to walk up and either try to get the wave in but then their jungles like bot side and then it's like really bad for me because then my jungle is top side 
and then he gets to freeze, right? Yeah, and then he freezes, and I lose a lot. Perfect, perfect. We this is like a light bulb. This is like, if you want to see us, and the wave is pushing to the enemy, you need to be stronger than them. Yeah. The variable to keep in mind is the junglers. You know their junglers bot side, and your junglers top side. So even though you're stronger than him, he gets to crash. So it's really bad if you were to push, because if you were to push and you were the one that had to walk up past this line, then you'd be the one that couldn't farm. So you need it to push to you for you to be able to play the game. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes sense, because then, I, then it's like I'm being forced to walk up with the live being bot side, and then if I walk up to like force the wave in, I'd probably either die or just get ganked or you get frozen on or something bad would happen yeah it's not going to be ideal because either they try to fight us on it and then i end up like losing half my hp or just actually die either way so it's like pretty rough okay that makes sense nice love to hear that all right so now what do you want to do off of this wave slow push it yes does it slow push with cannon though or it'll always slow push yeah if it's just even it's Can I zone him side. off here? Or like, well, actually, I'm still playing kind of cognizant of the Lilia, but it's like, what's the ideal here? Is it better for me to just kind of be up, but like a little bit further up, just kind of zoning him off? Or I will, I will explain this. I guess in terms of, do you know how in fighting games there's like a neutral game where they like people space each other? I don't know if you play any fighting games at all, but it's a very similar concept. Do you? <laughs> okay basically sorry what's better for Aphelios let's say Lilia is like here uh if you're Aphelios or you're Lilia would you be more incentivized to look at Callista and actually think this guy might die if you're standing right here at the edge of his range or if you're standing back here back there so I'm saying which which position is more likely for them to actually think they can make a play on you. Like, which position of you standing? Oh, if I'm playing further up. Right. So your goal, when their jungler is bot side, or anytime you're playing AD carry, is you want to step up as far as possible that you can at all times without actually giving them an angle to kill you. And something to keep in mind is that your cleanse is coming up in three seconds. So even if Lilia comes bot side, it's really hard for you to die. But the thing is, by playing up, even if you don't get any advantage uh -oh. from playing up, you're safe enough to where they can't gank you, and it's going to give you information on where their jungler is. This guy knows that you win if you fight to the death, right? So if you start mm -hmm. running at him, you can tell based off of what this guy's doing whether or not their jungler is here. And you're not putting yourself at risk of getting ganked because you have a ward behind you, and you know that you have cleanse coming up so they can't kill you. So you want to play as far up as you can to get information. I think with the safe swap, kind of be like in the middle of like those two melee minions, like a little bit. Yeah, like anywhere anywhere here, you're, you're chilling. Okay, yeah. Because they're not behind you. You'd see them if they came behind you. You could just run back yeah, to tower. Yeah. So I would basically always posture up as aggressively as you can because he is a champion that cannot just dash and get on top of you. Obviously, if you're playing versus like Nautilus or Blitzcrank or Leona with Flash, then you have to be a lot more cognizant of like how far can I step up. Because you're playing against Lulu Aphelios, you can pretty much always just like run at them and see what they do. Yeah. Whereas here it's like, yeah, you're kind of stepping up, but, but then I, I would be that. contesting him on creeps. This yeah, is yeah, the yeah. true test of is his jungler here? Because if I walk towards him when he's about to CS and try to hit this melee minion, I know whether or not Lily is here. Because if he backs away immediately, their jungler is probably not here. Or I, ping, I can at least I pressure him on the CS. I was still playing a little bit too passive because I pinged the king on Drake still because I thought like, shit, well maybe she's soloing it and doing it like super slow, but maybe I just like played it a little bit way too passive. Because I see what you mean that I should easily be able to like walk up and just hit him and, or just contest him. Yeah. You should but always I... look to contest him. Like I think you're over-respecting their jungle a bit too much. Because it feels really bad as a jungler if you're trying to do an objective and your bot lane just starts fighting or like your laners yeah. just start fighting because then they have to decide, do I want to get off this objective to go gank or it'll even bait them to overstay. 
let's say they just kill dragon they want to recall and you know lilia's top camps are respawning you're kind of incentivizing him to stay on the map and bait him and he will lose like jungle efficiency or clear speed by just staying around so even though their jungler is bot side you should always be kind of baiting them to waste their time that's like the best thing you can do as weak side you don't want to just give and play super safe and super respectful you want to always be just kind of like wiggling back and forth and just maybe on this creep they all in me you know that's what the good yeah. callistas do you'll always feel pressured that maybe they'll all in me on this minion or like maybe their junglers here on this creep and you can be like kind of like an actor that just walks up and pressures on every minion without actually putting yourself in danger and that's the goal i know that that's what usually it feels like when i play against like good callista players where if i'm the felios here i'll usually just not you're be scared able to walk right you're like i can't walk up at all like they're i can't walk, I walk up unless up my lily is behind me yeah yeah and then if i walk up i'll probably either take like a really bad chunk and then lose all my hp or either die just because i wanted to hit the wave yeah but because i'm not like a good callista player yeah it's like i'm playing it really poorly and giving him like room to breathe right and do you remember what I talked about? Um, kind of like, I guess, just mindset and how you want to play these champions with an advantage. You want to constantly be... You know how I said you want to constantly be leveraging your advantage in lane? Yeah. This is a really good example be... of how you do that. You just always create pressure and put the enemy team in a situation where they don't know what your intentions are or they have to respect that you could all in them. And you want to always be kind of putting yourself in spots where you can do that. All right. So we don't end up pressuring him on this wave. Let's get back to the game. We're at seven minutes. It's been like 40. Oh, yeah. I forgot I'm really bad. I, I think that was like the only time I ever used my W this game. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at using Calista W, but you can get it stuck. I don't know if you still can do this, but you used to be able to get it stuck behind objectives. If you place it behind Dragon, it'll just walk all the way behind Dragon and then just stay there. I did not know that. With camps, you can't do it, but with Dragon and Baron, you can. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I generally just use W as Callista to find the jungler, like just throwing it at their camps. All right, this is really bad by me. Don't ask why I did that, because I just have AIDS, and that's why. Oh, my okay, so why did, weird, and I also... Why did you want to look for this? <laughs> I, did, I didn't see Lulu. <laughs> I didn't see Lulu there, and I thought that Maybe I could have took a good chunk, but obviously it was awful. So you have the right my, idea of my Lulu, trading. Or no, my Leo was walking away too, so I obviously was. it was a lot worse than it would have been. I also did not see that my jungle was fighting the Lilia there too, so that's also on me for not looking at the map. Right. Their Lilia is showing on vision crossing to invade you guys, and your Leona is moving to help your Gwen, but you are tunneled on trading in the lane right now. Because yeah. this is a good time for you to trade. When you're pushing into the enemy AD carry, that's the best time to look for trades. Because you always have the I option thought, of basic. Yeah, Lulu just hit out of vision. And also, I thought that she would have walked to up the Lulia, but obviously didn't. It's, like, really bad here for me now because he could just... He can freeze now. Yeah, you're too low to actually freeze fight. it. And I'm also low as fuck now. So it's, like, really bad for me. This is also why... Um, Callistas generally tend to put a point or a few more points in their queue against champions that outrange them because if you're only doing a short trade, Callista needs to hit you until you die for her to do yeah. more damage than you. If you're just doing like a few auto attacks to each other, even if it's 1v1 here, unless you're burning cleanse and fighting him to the death, his auto queue root, like if he uses both of his abilities, you're going to take more damage in the trade. So it would just be better to like put like three points into Q, not like that's what I do, four, yeah. Or about three. Okay, okay. So just be like level up twice after. You can like to Q him and then like maybe E him and and kind of walk at him, but you shouldn't give him auto range unless yeah, yeah, your Leona's yeah. here and about to E on him. Then it's fine. Yeah. But I think another well, honestly, thing is just I, I thought it. I, What's up? Yeah, I because I also didn't see Lulu, so I thought like if I committed to a trade, I'd be. I'd win a lot harder but i don't know if i would win there like even if lulu isn't there i don't know how it goes but i thought it'd be fine for me to just jump at him with lulu not being there but maybe that was grief and it was so 
it's seven minutes in the game. The second camps are respawning. Junglers are hitting level six. Dragon is sometimes up, but sometimes it's not. It doesn't really matter. But the main point I'm trying to make here is that after around five minutes, it becomes a lot more important to think about the entire map when you are pushing waves. So this starts all the way back here. You're slow pushing into Aphelios, and your jungler is going to base <clears throat> and come bot side to do his bot camps. So immediately what I would be thinking as Callista is I want to build the biggest wave possible. One, because I can deny him while the wave's here, just like straight up for my, my golden XP, it's good. But the second thing is that the more minions that you have available here, the longer time you have to go do something on the map. Like you can leave for longer. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you because he has that fat just wave, make so the biggest timer. Like oh, say 80. that again. Because he, ha it's gonna be like a fat wave crashing into him, and he has to decide either to stay in for that wave there, or lose all that, like, golden XP to help out and like walk over to jungle. Or... Exactly. Yeah. And let me uh, just do a quick illustration. I don't have. Let me see how I want to do this. Can you see this this rift kit thing? Yeah. Okay, so basically, if you push the wave to here, this cursor is too big, but if you push the wave to here and you leave, and he also leaves, the wave is going to be slow pushing back to you. So let's say you guys both... Oh, that's not what I want. Let's say mm -hmm. you push this wave. Let's actually illustrate the exact same thing that just happened. So your Nivea is under tower, your mid's moving, your Gwen's at red buff. They're kind of fighting here. You push the wave in. You leave. These guys don't push this next wave that's coming in, and they also leave and follow you, right? Let's say no one's bot lane for the next minute. What happens to the wave? Kind of push back into me. Right. But also they're losing a lot of... They're losing a lot of golden XP. Do you know how much it is? No, I don't. So every 30 seconds, every minion wave that you get that they don't is one kill. So each wave is around 180 gold. So if you were to get 180 gold and they were to miss 180 gold, it's more than a kill. And if the wave is stuck here and no one touches it for the next minute, it's not going to crash into your tower for around a minute to a minute and a half, three waves. So if you guys fight to the death, it gets really messy. It runs all the way to mid tower, you know, he ends up having to base over here. You run back bot and you collect the wave at your tower. You just got three kills. Even if nothing happens here, you guys just look at each other. Everyone's one HP. You run back bot, collect three waves. He misses three waves because he left. You killed him three times. I get what you're saying. I just feel like it's like a, for me, it's like an overloading amount of like, because I'm not like that aware mm -hmm. of like timers and like value of like waves and stuff like that so it's like so pretty new to me but i got you yeah let's let's simplify it a bit then basically if you push your wave and you leave and the wave is slow pushing to you they pretty much are locked in lane and they have to stay there otherwise you're gonna get more money than them when you come back yeah. that's that's basically what it boils down to So we want to use this wave timer to go do something. They're fighting in jungle. Your support wants to go fight them and help his jungler. And you're looking to trade in this lane. <laughs> I don't I don't know if it helps that I play deaf in two, but I don't know. I just get like really I play a lot worse if like players start spamming me. And so yeah. but I guess playing deaf in isn't any better either. So Honestly, it's play. a it's a blessing to play deaf in because you get to actually it forces you to look at the map and be aware of what's going on without your teammates spam pinging you for help i'm sure leona and gwen were spam pinging there when lilio was in the jungle <laughs> it worked out for them but yeah i mean I, I think it's like good and like can be bad at the same time sometimes but i also just really play a lot worse if like Somebody starts pinging me or just being annoying in chat. Yeah, it's fine to play uh, Deafen. It doesn't really matter. I would say that in terms of initial laning, this is kind of where the concepts that you learn for early game 
don't really matter as much anymore because after eight or I guess nine minutes, it doesn't really matter when, but just after the first 10 minutes of the game, it's more you're just spam pushing and playing for objectives. Yeah, so yeah. we pretty much went through all of the of the early game so far. I mean, let's just go back and look at the different wave states. And now that we talked about it, see if you can identify kind of like what you did wrong, like what you should do in the next lane. So we talked about this one. Do you remember what you did wrong here? Yeah. I uh, let the Felios hit me, and I also was playing in like range of the casters, which makes it a lot worse for me because I'm not playing a 2v3. Exactly. And this trade should have been good. You you guys were in the right spot. You were positioned correctly. It's just the way that you executed it was bad. Would it be better for me to just ping for my Leo to just walk up and E on the Felios like once he shows or like I don't know because it just like uh, once he walks up a little bit further because I know we waited a little bit. I feel like maybe we might have waited a little bit too long but you're saying e I will kind of yeah e, well not E here but like just walk up and threaten him I don't know so if Leona were to walk up she would take aggro of the casters until they settle, right? Like until they're hitting your minions. Yeah. And like I said, it's a BF sword level one. So if you just walk through the wave anytime right now. Well, no, no not right now, but once he like After it settles, right? Play, yeah, yeah. Or right now. Like... like both of you guys just walk up and start hitting them. You're saying like here? Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like, was it fine to wait? I don't know. I would say maybe it's not fine. let the Lulu like get not closer. let the Lulu get to lane, right? Yeah, that's what you guys should be doing. Yeah, I think most of the time when you play in this bush, a lot of it is just seeing what they do. Yeah, because I mean, if they're here and the here, wave, so you're like not doing anything, right? Like yeah. if, if they're together walking up at the minion wave, you're just gonna back off and just start hitting the minions, and you don't have an advantage anymore. But because they walk to lane desynced, you want to play off of that. I'd say, generally speaking, you never want to force in this huge wave. So you always want to wait until they come or until the wave settles to do anything. But in this case, they're just desynced, so you should punish that. Are there, like, specific... So I don't know, because I feel like sometimes there's moments where, like, even, like, just letting the wave walk up here that, like, the... Because I know it's happened to me where I, like, even when I walk with the wave, I still end up, like, either dying or, like, burning flash. I don't know. I was like... I, just, I guess I played it poorly, but I also just feel like there are... I don't know. Because I know it's happened to me where I play against Kalissa, and it's, like, they have, like, a Nautilus or Pike, and then it's, like, they don't care about the wave, and they manage to just walk up and then just kill you or burn the summoner spell, so I don't... You don't know, like, exactly when that's the best thing to do? Yeah. Um, There's a few times when you can do that. I wouldn't say it's really common. I think you should mainly just focus on keeping your health good and taking good trades on your end. Like, you should never be the one that starts those engages. Because, like, if there's an angle where you can just kill them level one and you have a really aggro support, like, I don't know, pike with Halo Blades, more often than not, they're going to set it up for you and you can just react yeah. to it happening. I wouldn't really worry about uh, should I be running into the wave and, and tanking it and killing them. I think as mm. AD carry, you generally should treat the wave level one, especially as I can't fight in this okay. at all. Like I should not tank these creeps. Um, so there is one thing that you can do if you really want to play super aggressive and kill them level one is some people will, instead of sitting here, they'll sit here and kind of wrap into tribush and go behind them. When they come to oh, lane. Yeah, I, I've had that happen to me. I do that like, pretty often when uh, I'm playing a really aggressive, like, in this lane, I would do that. I would sit here, have your support go sweeper. When the wave settles, if they don't walk up at all, you sweep this bush. And then you don't have to walk up bot lane to get XP until the melees are going to die. So you have a lot of time to just wrap around on them and start fighting them. Because the benefit of doing that is, look where the casters are. If you're fighting them here, you're not taking aggro of the casters. You're just straight up brawling them. So that's the only thing that I would keep in mind if you're playing a really aggro matchup like Callista, Draven, uh, anyone with Hailblades. Ash can do that too. Just anyone that has a really strong level one, you can do that. Okay. 
Yeah, I have cancer for that. My bad. No, you're good. <laughs> and then here, uh, what is yeah, the mistake the that you made here? The wave, wave fighting in the yeah, fighting in the big wave is like really bad. I mean, I don't know. I just felt desperate to fight him because of that level one death. And if you were to go into the situation again, what would you do the next time? Just trim the wave and try to freeze out. Yeah. Especially because my support's also walking, so it's like he's going to have to be... He's like really low, and so, I mean, it's like if he tries to break the freeze, Leo just goes on him, he dies, and er, he's also fucking up his tempo really bad by still staying, trying to crash the wave. And what's uh, one other thing that you could do if you stall him and make him stay here for longer? Because your Leona's going to be here. Leona can kill him, right? Or he'll yeah. die if Leona's here. So if you stall time and just trim this wave, you know, play in the bush like we talked about, yeah. and he takes longer to kill this wave, when you freeze, your Leona can show up and then just run into these bushes and stop his base. He's overstaying, so... When your Leona gets here, it's not like Leo you can utilize Leona only to freeze. You can also utilize your support to make their tempo even worse. Imagine if you're freezing right now and he had to walk all the way back to tower to base. Or he bases here, Leona cancels him, and then he runs all the way back to tower and then bases. He's going to miss the full next wave. But it's all, yeah, mostly just prioritizing the minion waves, I would say. Uh, next thing. Kill him here. Solid. We pushed. We based. I just let that wave crash into me. And not do that thing I did where I just... Oh, wait, no. This is where I just played way too passive and, like, didn't really put any pressure on him when he was trying to farm. So just being a little bit better with playing like a safe range but also being able to apply pressure yeah it was on uh this wave that uh we were talking about and then the final he, thing he's like struggling to walk up but then i give him like room to walk up right here right you give up yeah. your lead and then the final thing would be this trade here I would say that this is most of the early game. Yeah, yeah, just looking at the map and walking down instead of trying to, like, take a trade here. Even if Lugo isn't here, it's still pretty bad. And then now my wave is, like, in a rough spot. Let's summarize all these, give you, like, some actionable things to focus on in lane. So I would say the first thing is on the first wave, like, Pay attention to the minions. Be cognizant of fighting in the wave. The second thing I would say, like, in general, when you're landing as AD carry, you want to focus on maintaining your HP. This is pretty general, but this point applies to right here. You want to take the trades that will give you the best condition possible. You don't have to lose your health to kill them. You just have to have more health than they do on every trade, right? So yes. here, just taking this, even just autoing and backing off here, it's still good because Leona has Aftershock. You don't care if your support loses health, but for you, you just got Leona to half HP for, or sorry, Lulu to half HP for free if you were to leave, right? So really maintaining your HP and in lane prioritizing your condition. The third one would be this one I would say is be more mindful of the minion wave. It's kind of uh, applies to the first point, but be more mindful of the minion wave slash yeah. step up when you're strong. You can utilize your body here a bit more to make him take longer to push instead of just blow your advantage and just kill him. him. Yeah. yeah. And then the final one would be always look to play in the furthest like range you can step up possible. So hide your intentions, step up 
to pressure on every CS. I also need to just be better with like looking at what my jungle is doing as well. Look at the map. Cause I don't think I'm bad at it, but I'm like sometimes just get too zoned in. I'm just. I guess when you're when you're building a wave. Because yeah, for this one, sense. it's not even necessarily like I need to know my jungler's fighting. It's like I need to know that my jungler's bot side. So this wave is not for fighting. This wave is build a slow push and then go do something with my jungler. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like you kind of formulate a plan when you build a wave based off of what your team's doing. Uh, and then I'll also get into, I guess, a little bit more um, just like general... I think this one will help a little bit. What can I do with a wave crash? So it's base, move. I'd say when the enemy jungler is bot side and mine is top side, look to trim the wave freeze to avoid getting ganked so these are the things that i think that you should think about as you lane for the next i don't know five or ten games and then mm -hmm. i think we'll stop here with just this lane review and i'll check in with you and see kind of how this is going but i want you to also send me clips of just different okay. lanes that you encounter and see what kind of things you're running into but as a general baseline, does does the stuff that I'm going over make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Okay. And Appreciate did you find that. did you find this helpful at all? I did, I did. Okay, huge. Uh I'm gonna end the recording, but time. I'll still sit in 